there are half dead flowers behind me and I did choose to intentionally add them into the shot. I don't know what that says about me. Hello, hello. So today I thought we would do a kitchen essentials video. I feel like I've done tons of what I eat in a days and like cooking with Jack videos, baking with Jack. There's no secret that I am a foodie. I love eating well and I just, I, I enjoy the art of cooking even though I am very much so an amateur chef if I can even call myself that. But I do really enjoy cooking and making food for people and I realized that I actually never made a video talking about my essentials. And I've gotten quite a few DMs and messages just asking like, hey, I'm moving out for the first time. What do I need? Or something similar like that. So I figured I would just do a video walking you through the things that I find that I end up using the most and basically just I want to help you make your chefy dreams come true so here we are before we hop into it I do want to give a major shout out to today's video sponsor Squarespace I know you hear me talk about Squarespace and that's because I love them I use them literally every single day I've got both my websites with them most recently I have my shop JacquelineForbes.com website with them which is my merch website and Squarespace has just been the most amazing platform to power that website with Squarespace really is an all-in-one platform that can kind of help elevate your business and really just just take everything to the next level. If you are thinking of making a website, do it with Squarespace. You can head to squarespace.com slash Jacqueline Forbes and get 10% off your first purchase. We'll talk a bit more about them later, so stay tuned for the end. But let's hop into the kitchen essentials. The mess of kitchen tools I have down here. I don't know where to start. Ah, uh, should we start with more conventional thing? No, let's start with this. Number one, I think you need a good basic knife. I don't even know if this is just like a chef's knife or like, just like a basic knife. I literally got this at Loblaws, I think, maybe six years ago. I don't even do like the proper upkeep to it. I've sharpened it a few times, but this itself isn't even that fancy of a knife. I think I spent like $30 on it. But that being said, definitely worth investing in a really good knife. I mean, you can get really great, like amazing quality knives for like around $90, $100. So I'm definitely thinking of kind of upgrading, but so far this has done the trick. Like I said, I'm no pro, so this definitely has worked for me, but you just want like a really good, like medium sized chef's knife kind of thing. Good handle, good grip. I use this literally every single day of my life. Okay, next up, I'm gonna talk about pots and pans. So if you are living alone, honestly, I would say you could probably get away with like one kind of saucepan and one pot. If you are making bigger meals or cooking for other people, I have about four pots now. A pot, they're not all pots. What's the other word? Pot, saucepan. Yeah, I guess a pan. Oh, a pan, I guess. Aren't you glad you're watching this video and getting educated by me? So we're gonna start off, this is the smallest one here. Small saucepan, great for heating up sauces, making little side dishes, great. Number two, a medium sized pot. This is great for boiling water, boiling potatoes. This is from Ikea. Not very expensive, but if you just take good care of them and clean them well, they last quite well. Honestly, for myself, I find that I normally end up using this probably the most, along with this, which is a kind of like medium size, I guess we'll call this like a saucepan. It's like a bit deeper though, so it's really great for doing like stir fries. I make a lot of pasta sauces also in here. This is just like a very like a versatile, versatile, you guys know I can never say that word. It's a very versatile pot saucepan. I don't really know. It's huge though. And again, this has lasted for years. I actually stole this from my parents' place, which was very kind that they let me take this because I use this literally all the time. Definitely would recommend something like that. And the recent addition to my pot is um, a large pot, which honestly just makes it a lot easier. This is like if I'm making like dinner for my family and I'm like boiling potatoes or making a ton of noodles or I don't know, making something at a larger scale. This is great because I used to overflow my other saucepans. So again, just kind of an essential. Now, you know, you are growing up and adulting when you get a cast iron skillet for your birthday gift. This was so, so sweet. My parents obviously know that I love cooking and I think I maybe had mentioned in a YouTube video that my dream of life was to own a cast iron skillet. So they were very kind and bought me one. And then I ended up seasoning it over the holidays, getting it ready. And again, this is just something that will last you your entire life if you care for it properly. Yes, these are maybe a bit more high maintenance in the sense that you don't want to get, get these wet and wash them in water and like, you know, make them rust. But if you care for it properly, I've heard stories of people like getting these passed down through generations. So a great, again, a very versatile, versatile, versatile utensil in the kitchen. Um, I mean, obviously I am a vegan, so I don't like necessarily use these for like cooking like steaks and meats, which apparently cast iron skillets are great for. But things like making like a deep dish pizza and pop it in your stove or making cinnamon rolls in here like you can really just do a ton of things with this so really great and um, very heavy so also you get a workout in 
Okay, we have a few more basics to get through, then we'll get into the more exciting things. So stay with me. Next up, metal bowls. I have a lot of metal bowls. And these ones, I literally just bought these off of Amazon. I'll link most of the things that I'm talking about. If I can find the links to them, I'll put them in the description box. But these I just purchased off of Amazon. They have obviously so many different sizes. I use these for making cookies, mixing salads. Like you really just do need a good collection of stainless steel bowls, super easy to clean, really easy to store. So you will just appreciate having a ton of those on hand. Next up, we have a cutting board. And I'm also someone who has those cheapy plastic cutting boards and I do use those a lot too. I know that's apparently not very good. They hold bacteria, they're bad for your knife. I do it, okay? I know eventually I wanna get one of those like gorgeous thick cutting board block things. I'm just not there yet. And eventually I can dream of being there, but um, I definitely use those bad ones too. But I've got this one, which is a bit nicer. It is um, a wood one and just having a good large cutting board. I cannot tell you how much it changes the game. And it's so funny, growing up, my mom actually never owned a cutting board, which I actually don't understand how, because she made a bunch of home cooked meals and was, you know, so great at feeding us great and delicious meals, but she just never had a cutting board. She would just like cut all the vegetables in her hand, if that makes any sense. I don't know. This has been a newer item in my in my life. Um, I love a cutting board. You need one, you really do. And if your budget allows for it, invest in a really nice one that you can have forever. Again, I'm not there quite yet, but hopefully. Okay, last but not least for like the more <laughs> Okay, anyways, sorry, getting back to the more basic things just to fly through them. This is more, I actually, this is not just baking. This is cooking and baking. Um, I have this sheet of three different baking trays here. Obviously you can do everything. I pretty much use one of these every single night when I'm making dinner, whether roasting veggies, cooking some vegan chicken on it. There's honestly so much you can do. You need some of these. Then I also have this um, cake tin. I don't know what you call this. Um, this obviously is great for making banana bread, which if you have not tried my vegan banana bread recipe yet, what are you doing? I'll have it linked up above. That banana bread, it just, it does something to me. And seeing this pan just, it gets me emotional, okay? Um, anyways, amazing obviously for making any loaves, things like that. But I've even made like shepherd's pie in pans like this before. So I'm really glad that I have this on hand. The last thing that I have here is this like Pyrex kind of like glass dish thing, which I've like roasted potatoes on sometimes. Again, this is actually a hand-me-down. Um, the only thing with this is you have to be careful if you're using any glass or dish like this with certain heat, like it can't go up too high to like 400 degrees because it could crack. So something to be mindful of, but also it's just kind of nice to have like a deeper baking dish like this. Okay, now this kind of goes hand in hand with all those baking sheets. I end up using parchment paper a ton and it just makes it so easy for not only clean up, but also can really kind of help like things caramelize or like just cook better and get more like crispy or I don't even know. Parchment paper honestly just does change the game. And I've used those silicone baking sheets before and I actually talked about them quite a bit on my channel. But the problem is cleaning them is like not possible. Like you can clean them, but they somehow just build up this like disgusting grime. And even though I do put it in the oven at like an obscenely high temperature, I still feel like it is slightly harboring bacteria. So I went in there with good intentions, trying to like save the environment and use less disposable parchment paper. But the reality is I don't know how hygienic it is. So if anyone has any cleaning hacks, I still have those reusable kind of silicone baking sheets, but I don't, it's not that I wouldn't recommend them, but they just don't ever really clean right. So it's been like a year or so and I've had them and they're just, they're not the same as what they originally were. So I end up often just going for regular parchment paper and I use it a ton when I cook. Um, so definitely great for the baking sheets. Would recommend this. Now, next up, as we get into the more obscure things, actually in the same spirit of talking about environmental sustainability and, you know, trying to reduce your waste, I have these reusable um, like container toppers here. It's supposed to be like a reusable saran wrap replacement. And actually there's a more sizes. There's a bigger one and a smaller one, but I actually am using them. Actually, let me show you what they look like. Okay, so here's like a perfect example of when I would use it. If I like cut open an avocado and I don't wanna, you know, put disposable saran wrap on there cause it'll just get thrown out. I just use these like little silicone cups and I put my little avocado in there and then you can just kind of wash it. These can go in the dishwasher and they're very effective. So these are really great, um, especially if you are someone that, you know, has a lot of leftovers or store things in your fridge and um, you're trying to help the planet a little bit. So these I would recommend. These wash really well and they've worn really well. These are also from Amazon. I'll have those linked down below. Is that kind of like a major juxtaposition? 
I'm like talking about environmental sustainability while saying I bought them on Amazon. I try, okay? I try my best. As I step on this Camelback, this isn't necessarily a kitchen essential, but to me it is. This is my Camelback one liter Eddy water bottle. If you're new here, I talk about this thing so much, you would think that this is like a child or a member of the family. And it honestly basically is. This is just like the best water bottle ever. I've asked Camelback a million times to um, sponsor me or work with me. They don't want to, they, they don't reply. Um, I kid, I kid. Um, I love Camelback though. This isn't an ad, I wish it was. I'm just obsessed with these things. They make you drink so much water and as much as like eating good food and you know, cooking up a storm, hydration is like just as important. So while you're cooking, Camelback Eddie is always just like on my side or do I want to admit this on camera? Sometimes I'll just like, uh, I'll let it dangle as I do things. So it's a hands-free experience. Like, let's bank that for later. Let's shelve it. Let's shelve the conversation about that for later. Okay, next up, this really demonstrates the state of where I'm at. This is a used and not washed French press. I used it this morning. It's not like it's been sitting there for days. Sometimes it does. Today it's not though. This was just emptied out this morning, but there's still coffee grinds at the bottom. It needs to be cleaned out. Regardless, um, I love a French press. I'm someone, I don't have like an espresso or like an instant um, kind of machine like that. Not that I'm opposed to them at all. I just, my family always kind of would do a French press and stuff. So that's just kind of like how I make my coffee. And I, I love it. I love it so much. You make a big batch. It feels cost effective. Big fan of a French press. What is the brand of this one? Grioshka. Grioshka. Great, love it, would recommend. Okay, next up we have a food scale here, which I actually never really understood why people use food scales um, until I realized it's a way more accurate way to measure things. And I used to be someone who would like have a measuring cup and be like, okay, one cup of frozen mango in this recipe. But if you're not measuring it by weight, like who's to say there's not like air pockets and I don't know, it's just, it's way less accurate way to measure it. That being said, I did just do like measuring cup measurements basically my whole life. I just kind of got this about maybe a year ago. Um, but I really actually have been enjoying a kitchen scale, whether you're baking, where it becomes a lot more necessary to have accurate measurements. Um, it's great for that. But then also, yeah, if you're just following a recipe or trying to recreate something to a T, food scales are 200% the most accurate way to do it. This one's great. You can change units. It's pretty sleek and like, I don't know, it's just kind of like nice. It just fits nicely into my little cupboard. Also a measuring cup is essential. This one looks like it's moldy. It's not, it just is well loved. Next up. A baking mitt, very essential. You know, pulling things out of the oven. You need at least one. And I've done like the towel thing, but it falls off sometimes. This is just at least one, you need one. And in that same spirit, you're gonna want some hot plates. I have a couple different hot plates. This one here is my favorite though. It says chef and it's in gold. And my little cousin actually bought this for me for my birthday last year because I always say yes, chef. And I think she might've been mocking me, but regardless, I love it and I use it all the time. Okay, so this is actually what I threw across the room earlier and almost absolutely destroyed. This is actually a mandolin and oh this is actually really cool because it fits really good onto a side of a bowl. So if you're like making a salad and you want to like, you know, great, very fine slices of radish or cucumber, like it makes it very easy. And there's a couple different like attachments and there's like a like a protector so you don't, you know, slice your hand open. There's also like this thing that changes the um, the thickness of the cuts that it's doing. But yeah, a mandolin is just like a really great way to get very consistent and uniform slices. Say even if you're doing like sweet potato slices, it's just like a super easy way to um, go to town and do that. So if you're someone who maybe doesn't have like the knife skills yet, or you just want an easy way to get uniform slices, I think this is a really great option. I actually find I end up using a mandolin the most when I do pickled onions. I'm obsessed with anything pickled and I've been on a pickled onions spree so I just take a red onion and I just kind of go Ch -ch 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 -ch. that being said it does make you cry because you're just squirting red onion juice all over the place but it, it's very effective for very thin slices so really love a mandolin this one's super easy to clean so I would actually recommend this one specifically and again I'm pretty sure I ordered this one online so if I find the link um, I'll put it down below so you can get this exact one next up in the spirit of grating things and slicing things this is an actual cheese grater this has like various settings though I am someone I actually I don't think I'm very Oh, that's a lie. I was gonna say, I don't think I'm very specific and like needy about a lot of my cooking things, but actually I, I very much so am. But one thing that I can definitely own up to is that when I'm having a salad, I need to have grated carrot in it. And it's like, I just don't want to eat a carrot in any other type of way. Like I don't want it in chunks. I don't want it in ribbons. I want it grated in like this, this setting of grating. So I use this all the time. I just love a cheese grater. Also good too, if you're like doing shavings of things, I find if I'm actually like making cocktails or say like getting lemon zest or whatever, like you need something like this. I would also recommend something like this that has 
has like various settings because you have like the micro plane thing and like all just the different different versions and actually in the spirit of talking about cocktails this is also a, a mini bartending class as well i've got this the shaker inside and like the measurer but i actually find i've been really upgrading my like at home bartending situation my favorite thing is like making someone their favorite cocktail and trying to like make it fancy i'm not even like a huge drinker myself but i just enjoy the act of i, I just like making things for people i think that is like maybe is that my love language i don't know but anyways having a really good shaker is a necessity having a good like muddler stick things like that and then also just having some nice like glassware obviously we are not in the day and age anymore where house parties and having people over is a thing anymore i have hope that we will make it out back to when you know you can have people over and make people dinners like my favorite thing is just having like really nice glassware at like dinner parties or like i mean dinner parties it makes it sound like i'm so formal it's not formal i have like three seats on a ikea table here which like love but yeah it just makes like any little hangout session just feel that much more special if you have like really nice you know cocktail glasses and when i say nice it doesn't have to be like expensive by any means but just something that feels a bit more special so i have like a bunch of different like little sets um this is just one that i pulled out but any like nice kind of elevated glass it just takes like the whole experience to the next level and i'm someone when it comes to like baking eating like we obviously all know like your eye is the first introduction to anything in front of you so if it's visually appealing it just like makes the whole thing that much better so um definitely about some nice glassware also i think if you could find like vintage glassware that is uh the best thing like there's nothing better than finding unique pieces like that i think cups and glassware and cocktail glasses things like that that's all a really great thing to kind of look at vintage stores for if you have any in your area okay some more regular things here that i find i use often i've got a lemon and lime um squeezer which is great huge fan of like fresh citrus juices and things like that again it just really like elevates anything that you're making that and like fresh herbs is like the cheapest and easiest way to make any of your meals feel that much more fancy and expensive also a mixing wooden spoon i also did hear on tiktok that these harbor the most bacteria maybe it's just like the italian side in me just like reminiscing of like my grandma making pasta and having like that one wooden spoon i mean i think it helps with the flavor whatever's going on in here so don't know if these are the most hygienic maybe there's a better option just like using a stainless steel spoon i don't know i don't know like nothing can replace a wooden spoon i use it is it sanitary question mark next up i got a good ladle ladle is great love making a soup love making a sauce this is necessary also a can opener necessary i eat a lot of chickpeas uh flip flipper a flipper i actually don't know what these are called why do i feel like it's on the tip of my tongue uh I have no idea what this is called. Oh my God, whatever this is, like a pancake flipper thing. These are needed. What is that called? I have no idea. Next up, we've got a whisk. Um, I'm someone that did not get introduced to a whisk until about two months ago. And wow, oh wow, it has completely changed the frothing game for me. If you've watched any of my recent What I Eat In A Days or my What I Eat In A Week, I will link it up above. I've had a lot of conversations about a frother and it's changed my life. And actually one of you subscribers kindly gave it to me, which is so, so nice. Um, but I will have you know, it has changed my life. So huge thank you for this. I love it. Get a handheld frother. Okay, next up, this is like a shout out to all my fruit loving people out there. Any of my vegans, you know, this really, I feel like I really discovered all of these when I was in my like initial vegan phase. That's back when like the internet was all about like fruitarianism and I thought I had to eat a ton of fruit to be vegan. Luckily, I am personally out of that phase now, but that being said, in that time I did discover a lot of like good fruit tools and things that I still use and love today. This first one being a pomegranate machine. That's what I call it, a pomegranate machine. It's not necessarily a machine, but basically what you do is you cut your pomegranate in half. You put this little like grate on top of it, put the pomegranate in like this, then you put the little lid on, then the pomegranate's in here and you're actually you're supposed to I think hit it with the back of a spoon but I just end up kind of like punching it because it's more effective and then all of the seeds fall out and all the like little membranes kind of get caught in here so it just makes you know de-seeding a pomegranate so much easier so I use this literally every single time I have a pomegranate and I cannot go without it so would recommend this I found this literally just at like my grocery store I'm sure you can buy it online next up this is a young coconut Stabber. Again, I don't know the official like name of this, but it's for coconuts. And I had a phase where I was super into like fresh young Thai coconut. And this is like the best thing for it. So you just kind of jab it in, twist it, and then you have the perfect hole for a straw. And um, it's like a really good like starting place to kind of crack it open. So this is actually like very, very great and easy to use. So if you're someone who likes a lot of fresh coconuts, oddly convenient to have on hand. And the last obscure fruit device that I have here is this pineapple corer. Corer? Oh, that's 
that's gonna be a hard word for me. Coror, a coror. Y'all, I had a speech impediment growing up and my R's sounded like W's and my W's sounded like R's. And there's some R words now that I hit and I still like, my brain doesn't know how to make the noise. And coror, a Oh my, a pineapple core machine. That's what I'm gonna call it. Anyways, this is convenient. Chop off the top of a pineapple, you kind of twist it in, boom, pull out the pineapple. And then you also are left over like with the pineapple like shell. So you can make a little like pina colada in there, like make a little smoothie bowl or something. It just is very like festive and also speaks to the whole presentation aspect. So definitely would recommend this. Okay, the last few things I have laying around here, this is um a little funnel thing, which oddly has come in handy when I'm like putting things in other packaging and randomly it's just like a good thing to have in the kitchen. Also, of course, you're gonna want measuring spoons and cups. It kind of goes along with the measuring cup that I showed earlier, but you're gonna want these. Of course, because we talk about, you know, saving the turtle, saving the planet, get your metal straws in, glass straws, any reusable straw, you just, you need it. Don't be that person that's still using plastic straws. Next up here, I've got a good pair of chopsticks, which obviously I like chopsticks to eat with, um, but also a really great tool to have, like kind of when I'm cooking things in like a saucepan, I just kind of want to move things around. So I love a good pair of chopsticks, definitely an essential. And then this is, I guess, more technically like a food thing. It's not really a tool because this is edible, but it just felt relevant to include in this video. And this is sea salt flakes. Now I'm someone, I didn't even know like where you buy sea salt flakes or like what the point of it was. I just knew a lot of like fancy restaurants would use those big sea salt flakes. Anyways, I ended up getting my hand on some sea salt flakes. And let me just tell you, it really elevates any dish. So big fan. And I'm not even like a huge salt person, but the sea salt flake? You need it, you need to try it. Okay, my last few staples are behind me and I was afraid that I was gonna forget them and not talk about them. Number one, my Smeg toaster. <sighs> you don't need to get a Smeg toaster. They're expensive and I think it's just for the name brand. I don't know, I didn't even know that it was a thing until I had a gift card to like Indigo and I needed a toaster and those were the only toasters they sold. Then I realized like Smeg is a huge thing and I discovered this like years later and turns out like they're known for obviously all their retro colored, amazing, you know, home and kitchen appliances and I ended up just getting the most boring silver smeg toaster ever which feels like an absolute sin and not that I have regrets like part of me wishes I got like a baby pink one or like a yellow one or even they have like a solid gold smeg now which that feels that feels like a Jacqueline toaster um but yeah no toast is my favorite thing in life bread is my favorite food it just means a lot to me and having a good toaster is definitely an essential love this smeg toaster also I've got a kettle over there kettles are an essential that kettle specifically Specifically, it's showing some signs of rusting. So I don't know if necessarily you need to buy that one, but a stovetop kettle, especially, I mean, someone like me, I've got actually quite a small kitchen. Like I live in a, a cozy sized condo. I love it, but it's cozy. So this is my entire kitchen. You're looking at it. And I'm basically standing in my living room while filming this. So this is all the countertop space that I have. So normally growing up, like at my family home, we would have um, like a hot water kettle that was like plugged into the wall that was like electric. Um, but obviously I was trying to prioritize having as much counter space available as possible. So I ended up going for a stovetop kettle just to kind of like save some counter space room. So I definitely appreciate having a stovetop one. And yeah, there's a bunch of really cute like colors and different ones and you can kind of make it a part of like the decor of the kitchen. So I love that baby pink one. And that was actually a gift from my mom and my dad, which was really sweet. So super cute, love that. It makes up for me not having a pink smeg. And then last but not least, I've got the base of the Vitamix over there. I've got the actual Vitamix container here. I think I've talked about this probably on my Instagram story before, but I'm a little like, I don't want to say like embarrassed, but like I'm a little embarrassed about my um my blender because it looks like it's dirty and cloudy, but it's really just well loved. And what I mean by that, like it's not actually dirty. It's like a bunch of like micro little like scrapes in the plastic barrel because I use this so much. And I mean, I, I use this not only for like smoothies and making soups, but also like blending a peanut butter at home or like making a flour or like more random things like that, which can be a bit more intense and like heavy duty. So I've had this Vitamix probably since 2014 and it is just like the best thing ever. I use it, I would say probably at least once a day. Oh, really good for like blending up dressings as well or like any like creamy Alfredo sauces, things like that. So I just, I honestly could not live without the Vitamix. This might be the most essential of them all. I love my Vitamix so much. I also like love this attachment to kind of like poke things around or like make vegan 
and banana ice cream or things like that. Like there's just, there's really no limits when it comes to the Vitamix. But I also did want to end on this note because if anyone has any cleaning suggestions, I've done like the baking soda and vinegar before, which definitely helps, but not that I want to say it's a lost cause, but I don't know if there's any hope restoring all of this. But either way, I mean, it's more of just an aesthetic thing. It just looks a bit cloudy and it doesn't look like the standard of clean that I want it to look like, especially if I'm serving people food out of it. But that's okay. It does the job. I love a Vitamix. I really do think it is like the greatest blender ever. But that being said, I mean, I guess I haven't really been updated on the blender game for like five years now. So if there's any other blender recommendations you have, let me know. A Vitamix definitely is more of like an investment because it's a hella expensive blender. There's no doubt about it. But if you're someone that's going to get the use out of it, I mean, they last. Are they supposed to last a lifetime? They have a guarantee on that? I think they might. Anyways, I love a Vitamix. I'm a huge fan and uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm obsessed. Okay, I think that pretty much covers everything. I'm just like looking around. I've got like knives now on my couch and I think that was everything. Okay, that is everything. You've learned the trade secrets. So if you want to see them in action, go watch what I eat in a day or one of my cooking videos. I'll link all the playlists and everything up above and down below. But yeah, that is basically the move. If I have any professional chefs watching or anyone that actually works in the food industry, please let me know what else I need or like how to upgrade my game. Honestly, it's kind of like a dream of mine. I don't know, maybe one day I would like, I don't know if I'd like go to proper cooking school, but take more of a formal culinary class. I think that'd be super interesting. But yeah, there's my tips from a very amateur, I don't even, I can't even say chef. That feels wrong. I, I don't have that title, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if this helped you out and let me know if you have any other suggestions and uh, just let me know, period. Just, just let me know what's up. Anyways, before we go though, I do want to thank our sponsor Squarespace one more time. Like I said, Squarespace is absolutely incredible. It's what I use to run both of my websites. ShopJackandForbes.com is my merch website where I make ethical sweatsuits. They're super cute and cozy and made in Canada. And designing that website through Squarespace has been the most seamless and easy process ever. Squarespace has a bunch of templates to kind of pick off of and base your website off of. So it's a really great starting point. But that being said, they also have so many customization and like different things you can do to elevate it. So you really can make it your own. Obviously shopjackandforbes.com is a shoppable website. So of course Squarespace has e-commerce capabilities as well. But no matter, you know, what the purpose is, Squarespace's whole thing is that Squarespace is designed for any purpose. So whether it's a blog, whether it's a portfolio, whether it's an e-commerce online shop, truly whatever it is, Squarespace is the place to make your website with. They also have award-winning customer service. So if you ever need help on anything, you can go to their forums, you can go to their live chats, and I'm sure you'll find the answer. So if you were someone like me who was super intimidated to kind of dive into the website world because you were no professional, do not worry. You do not have to be. Squarespace is truly as easy as it gets. And really, if I can do it, I believe in you. I know you can do it. So if you've been thinking about making a website, this is your sign. Make it with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com slash Jacqueline Forbes to get 10% off your first purchase. And let me know how your Squarespace journey is going. Let me know your website. I would love to check it out. Anyways, huge thanks again to Squarespace for always supporting my channel. It really means a lot. And on that note, now that all the kitchen supplies are out, I think it is time for me to make some dinner. Maybe chef it up over here. Anyways, go follow me on Instagram at Jacqueline Forbes if you want to see some of my real-time recipes and what I'm eating and all that stuff. But thanks as always for watching. I'll see you all very soon. Love you all. Bye.